What's up? This is episode six of Talking Sobriety with Colin Morrison. My whole uh, my whole concept in this is, you know, I don't really think kids nowadays are gonna listen to their dare cops or or you know their parents about uh, you know just not using drugs and everything. Larry has been my childhood hero since day one. Um, he brought me on the metal militia like 18 years ago, maybe 20 years ago, and uh, dude, he's still a living legend. He's clean and sober now. He's changed his whole life around. I mean, I look up to him a lot for that, and um, I don't know, I guess we're just kind of telling the story, man, where, how it went for you, I guess. Shit, man. Uh, <clears throat> well, how, what? How what went? How? I guess just I know you got your movie. You know, like how did you turn your life around? Because this whole thing, I'm just trying to tell okay, people. Okay, I got you. Yeah, you know, yeah. when you were in the hole, you really maybe didn't think there's a way out. I wanted to die every day, and through this, I just tell people how I got through it, and just the kids out out there. You know, it's like the epidemic's huge, and well, you know, you I mean, past it. It's just like with anything, you know, uh, like myself personally. You know, it's like, you can't just tell someone to be sober, you know, you can't just tell someone to not, not do drugs or not drink or, you know, or get off something. It's like, you know, like sending, you know, like sending someone to rehab and thinking that they're going to, you know, get better because they went to rehab. It's 2%, it, right? It's like, you know, I don't know, it just, it comes to that point of, I think that there's a big farsity of, you know, where it's a lot of people think that, you know, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of shit comes out of people just see shit and they're like, oh, you know, like, oh, I see this dude, you know, like smokes, smokes dope or is on dope and, you know, he does this and he does that and he's, he's gnarly, but, you know, is is a matter of fact you know coming from the other side of the tracks you know because like i used to look at certain people and be like oh they're so gnarly you know like oh uh, you know the the shit they're doing is just so uh, over the top you know like mm -hmm. christian fletcher you know what i mean like oh dude he's doing the most nut shit he's like you know like revolutionizing surfing you know <clears throat> like Jimi hendrix and shit like you know like dude the guy's just so phenomenal but it's like the reality is, is when those guys were at their prime and like the most gnarliest and like, I, not that I was ever gnarly or anything, but like when I was at my top physical peak performance, like I had nothing altering me, you know? And it was like, once I started putting altering things in me, you know, it's like mentally you feel gnarly, but you kind of transgress and mm -hmm. go down. But I don't know, dude, like, shit for me, it was just like, whatever, man, fucking, <clears throat> you know, being gnarly is being gnarly, you know, like, fucking anyone, anyone can go and fucking buy a bag of dope, at, you know, or, or fucking go and chew, fucking spin glow sticks and fucking, <laughs> you know what I mean, go to a New York nightclub with their shirt off, but, <clears throat> you know, reality is, is not anyone can fucking do a fucking hard flip on a skateboard on the mega ramp or, <clears throat> you know, a 24 stair or, you know, huck a, huck a dirt bike consistently, consistently, you know what I mean? Yeah, Not yeah. just fucking wing it here and there, and, you know, like a, a wing and a prayer, but, you know, just be a gnarly fucking human being, you know, like. Did it start off with pain pills with you when you went down that road? Is that kind of... Yeah. That was with me, then that ended up with Roxy's, and then it went to heroin. And I think nowadays, that's what all the kids are doing. And that's the only reason I'm doing this, man, because I see every kid going down that same road, and I just see how you and me, we, I feel you kind of went down that same path I did. We pulled it, and I feel, I mean, I'm on top. I ain't rich or nothing, but, like, my lifestyle, I feel like I'm on top escaping the fucking, the, the drug world, man. It was heavy, I, I don't know how you pulled it, how you got out. Did you go to rehab? Well, you know, shit, I've, 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 I've been to rehab, you know, rehab. And, you know, I tell, I, you know, I get hit up a lot, as you do, you know what I and mean, I get a lot of people yeah, you know, yeah. that ask me, you know, they're struggling with, you know, addiction and, you know, and, like, all this shit and, like, 
I've been to rehab, dude. I've been to five, six, I don't know. I've been to rehab so many goddamn times and it did not work. Like, I'd just leave. I couldn't handle it. Yeah. You know, um, the 12 step program, all that shit, you know, and it's like, I, I don't talk shit on it, you know what I mean? But that shit doesn't work for me, you know what I mean? It does work for some people and I give that to those people, but that shit doesn't work for me, dude. Like, going to the meetings and all that, it's like, dude, like, I have to be out like riding and like doing something that you know fuels my fire i can't be in a room you know what i mean i get a lot of flack from the aa you know the strong aa people speak i don't go to aa i haven't done the 12 steps i think my meetings are doing stuff like this where i'm able to like we have fans and stuff we're be we're able to like talk tell our story so this is my meetings and i feel you just got to get out there and just live life man so i'm i'm doing the same thing kind of you're doing man and uh, you know, I think it just everything. It's there's not one set thing you got to do because if there is that one thing, I mean, uh, it wouldn't be the nation's biggest epidemic, man. So I think it just works for uh, it works different for everybody, I guess. Well, you know, take the um, unfortunately, you know, like the uh, the biggest like because I grew up, you know, what I mean, like anti everything. Like I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm I still don't even drink because I'm. I'm allergic to alcohol, but <clears throat> like, like, fucking painkillers. It was like, once I got broke off a couple of times, and it was like, you know, it's like, when it, when the, when the, when the pain finally went away, and I took it, and like, I finally got that, you know, that just, you know, that feeling, you know what I mean? It's like addiction kicks in, like, you know, addiction is an addiction. You're either addicted to video games, you're addicted to jacking off, you know what I mean? You're addicted to, you know, there's like a yeah. gazillion different addictions, you know, other than drugs, but it's just like, what is, it that, that. what is it that triggers that addiction, you know? And it's like, you know, like once, once you find that you have an addiction, how do you counter feed that addiction, you know what I mean? Like... Uh, guys like us and say like going into an AA meeting, you know, like not talking bad about them. Like I said, it works for them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just like fucking social clubs work for certain people and, you know, the cloak and dagger club works for AFI, but it doesn't work for fucking me. <laughs> <clears throat> so, but, you know, I mean, like hanging out, like, I, I, I guess, you know what I mean? It's like at the end of the day, it's like having, knowing who you are and having a strong, you know, a strong base on who you are and like, you're not trying to impress anyone, you don't give a fuck about anyone, you know what I mean? It's like, you let everything go and you know what I mean? It's like, <clears throat> you know, like, you know how it is. Like, yeah, yeah. The pressure of like, oh, everyone's partying, fucking, oh, do this book, pussy, or oh, fucking do that, pussy, it's like, oh. And they fucking, t yeah, all right, dude, you know what I mean, fucking, I think you're back in. How about how about you go hit the fucking super kicker set at 75 plus C? You know That's what I mean? I'm talking about. When I went to rehab, everybody did their little homework assignments, like what led you to doing drugs. And for me, it was like it was kind of like the metal militia back in the day, dude. Because like back in the day, people don't really understand. I think the lifestyle of what we were living, uh, it was it was really rock and roll, man. You know. Uh, you know, after we go out and hit the gnarliest shit, I just feel the metal militia at that time, we would kind of go and, you know, following you guys were like the generals, but dude, it was a gnarly lifestyle back then. And just to kind of keep up with everybody, I can't, it's hard to believe that more people didn't get addicted to fucking drugs and alcohol Ooh. back in that day. And I, I think, think you know, them, you lived it. Have, yeah, you're right. Are. You're right. I just don't admit it. I just <laughs> think you're a success story. And I, I got a lot of respect because I know people that are watching this pretty much know who you are, like the, the history of the militia. And it was a whole different ball game back then. It was uh, how big you can go at the clubs, I guess. And Oh, dude, yeah, I, you know, it's just heavy. The stories, I don't, I feel I can't even tell half the stories, you know. Your movie's amazing, but, uh, dude, like, it was gnarly back in the day. Like, uh, like, like the, uh, the Black Friday shoot when you, uh, <laughs> when you drove into the semi truck. Yeah, he, I didn't even bring that story up. Dude. That was, like, one of the last time before rehab. I know you were still kind of. I, I, I seen you, I just remember getting up in the morning, I see you, like, it was, like, five in the morning, and you're loading up 
all the ice chests like in in your back of your truck. It was one of those off. nights. <laughs> I've had so many nights like that where I woke up and just people I'd like get out and I thought everything was cool and people would just look at me like so bummed out because I blacked out the night before. But I rem remember I got a couple Zanny bars and I boned out early. People won't even believe this story, but I like to be fucking really open to hopefully somebody out there. They're like, oh, that wasn't that bad. So I just remember driving home and I remember passing out. I slammed into the center divider and my whole bed liner flew out. And like when I was that messed up, I didn't think nothing of it. I'm like, oh, whatever. Just passed out of my truck, put the bed liner back in. Then I almost got to my dad's house. I passed out and I hit a semi. Dude, I passed out twice. I didn't kill anybody. And Dude, it was still, after Not that, I still, it wasn't that big of a deal. I'm like, eh, whatever, you know, and it's just, it's disgusting. It's funny, yeah, you know, but exactly. it really is because I could have killed somebody. And that's why I'm here now to like, kind of just tell the people like being sober is rad and that you can get through it. So I guess to close it out, man, like for the people that hit us up, I tell a lot and I, I think I don't have the right way, but when people hit you up and say, dude, how did you get through it? Like, because dude, there's so many kids out there watching this right now that they're addicted to opiates, man. Because doctors are prescribing this to every kid out there. How do you get off it? You know, I, for me, I had nothing else. I hit rock bottom. I had nowhere else to go. I was 30 living back in my dad's house. I passed out in my truck. This is another story. Slammed into seven cars, ran into a semi. I had nothing else. I was happy living in Twin Towers, you know, in jail. I was pumped there. So for me, I had to go to rehab. I tell people out there, rehab right off the bat, go to a meeting, you know. Um, it's not for me, it's not for Larry, but we're doing it differently. But I, I'd say if you're freshly trying to get clean, definitely go hit up a meeting. He is. It's a good uh, support system. I mean, what, what I do mean, you have to say? My, my advice is just, you know what I mean? Number one, change your surroundings. You yeah. Know what I mean? yeah, change yeah. The, change the people that you're around. Change the people that are, you know, bogging you down, holding you down. Sometimes you just got to go solo pilot for a little while. Just fucking, you know what I mean? If you have to sleep for, for a week, then, you know, be sick for a week, call in sick. You know what I mean? Take, you know... Yeah. Fucking <clears throat> just change your environment, change your lifestyle. You know what I mean? Like there's people that want to do that. That in, anything that isn't, you know, I mean, well, it depends. Like if you are content with living that way and you want to live that way, then you know what I mean. You're gonna live that way. But if yeah. you don't want to live that way, you know, it's like, it's like fucking, <clears throat> it's like fucking being a, you know, being a piece of bread in an ant pile. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's like it's going to be impossible to fucking not not get caught up in it so you know i hear you know? what where can people get your movie out there because people uh, uh shit dude no i put that shit free on youtube it's mind like, of the demon yeah mind of the demon mind of the demon dude legendary video we got the producer trying to say something what do you got I'm not saying fine. shit, dude. I'm trying to <laughs> fucking find out when to hit stop on this thing. Oh. I'm well, like, you how guys, long are your episodes, uh, guys? I told you guys we ain't gonna edit this. We're not. Larry Lane Coggle's a legend. Dude, thank you, man. You guys can't get sober. You can get it. Just, uh, get soldier up. <laughs> <laughs> We're out.